Yeah, greetings to you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yeah, if you're watching this video, it probably means you're watching it on YouTube, and means there won't be the facility to live interact. Anyway, uh, I have been given in total two sessions on handbook. And uh, it's two sessions, but it uh, actually includes four major topics. Uh, one topic is on how to forming an EU by a, uh, forming an EU by a student, and the second topic is the relationship of EU with uh, senior advisor, EZF, and staff. And then the third topic is about uh, the roles and responsibility of EU. And the fourth topic is about the constitution. So yeah, I've been given four sessions. And then what we can do is after the end of every session, uh, we can have a discussion in the Zoom Zoom app, not not here of course. So let's start with the first uh, first session, which is about forming an EU. But before we go to that particular topic, let us see a few. Let us answer a few questions. As you can see in the screen, and uh, the question is already there. What is an EU? Of course, that's a very stupid question to ask what is an EU. You already know what is what the EU is. It is European Union. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, of course, it is Evangelical Union. And I think the textbook definition will be Evangelical Union uh, is a fellowship of born again students who are Bible believing and accepts the authority of the Bible for the faith and conduct. So, Evangelical Union is basically a fellowship of a born again Christian. It's not a fellowship of uh, non-Christians, but a fellowship of born again Christians who are Bible believing and who accept the authority of Bible. So there are some people who who are Bible believing but does not accept the authority of the Bible. So we accept the authority of the Bible. It brings us and also uh, this EU, the people uh, who are EU, that means you and I, their aim is to make Jesus known to fellow students. So our main objective is evangelism, to proclaim the gospel, let people know about Jesus Christ. So I think it, uh, it brings us to the next question, the follow-up question. And the question is, who is an EU member? So before we answer, what is an EU? Now the question is, who is an EU member? Uh, there are four criteria, and let's look to all the uh, criteria. The first one is any student who has received Jesus Christ as his or her personal Savior, Lord, and God. So that's the first crit criteria. The person has to be born again. The person has to accept Jesus Christ, not just as Savior, but also Lord and God. The second criteria is that he or she must believe in the aims and accept the doctrine and basis of UESI. I hope you have already learned about that. And yeah, the third criteria is that after doing all this thing, after meeting all these criteria, he or she also has to sign the membership statement of an EU. So that's the third. And the fourth is uh, he or she has to take active part in EU's fellowships and activities. So those are the four, four criteria that we give to be to become a member of EU. As you know, to be born again and then uh, to agree with the aims and doctrine sign the membership and take active part. So these are just the definition, as you say, or the criteria to become an EU member. Now let's come to the main topic, and this is how to form an EU. I had a friend, uh, I have a friend, I should not say I had, I have a friend by the name Son Pao, and you might, or many of you might know him also. So he was a part of the Raven College in Surajampur, and when he went to modern college in Imphal, after he finished his class 12, he went there and the modern college is situated in such a place where it's uh, a kind of area where there are more number of non-Christians. And then he went there and there, there, there was no EU in, in modern college. So when he go there, he had the burden to initiate an EU there. And then he was looking for partners to pray. And then for a few days, he did not find anyone. He kept praying and then he found one friend uh, by the name Samuel. And both of them, they came together and then they start praying. It was quite, uh, he said it was quite funny because one person has to start the opening prayer and the other person will do the closing prayer. And it was like only both of them. So they did everything. So a few days, they started the prayer. People keep coming. They, they contacted the, the staff worker, the coordinator. And then they came together. They, they, they talk about and they at last uh, started an organization, which is the EU. They, they, Affiliate and now modern college by the grace of God 
who started us by two person and now it has reached and then many people have come to know Christ through it. So that's how an EU student can form an EU. This was just one example and I, I believe there are uh, myriads of examples throughout the country where a student has formed an EU or a student have taken active part in forming an EU. So we'll look here at uh, some of those things, uh, how to form an EU. An EU may be started by any student or senior who, so these are the qualities of those students uh, who can start an EU. First of all, he or she has to be born again. He or she must have a love for the Lord who accepts the supreme authority of the scriptures, has a love for other students, has a zeal for winning fellow students, is able and willing to give time to organizational and other details. Yeah, that's it. Uh, those are the ten, uh, those are the few criteria that they provided for a student. So if a person have all those qualities, he or she can start EU. I think this is something uh, if a person does have, if he or she has the burden, I think that's the main thing, the burden to to reach out to the people, then he or she can start an EU, and EU will help them in completing their work. Let's go with starting an EU by student initiative. It starts, it starts always with a prayer, and the way EU was formed, UESI was formed in the 1950s, was also through a prayer meeting. A few dozen, half a dozen of students and professors came together, Professor Hennington's in a house, and then they started praying, and then after what, I think it got blessed them, and they heard the prayer, and EU become a nationwide movement. So that's how it always starts, a prayer, a small prayer. So even here, if you want, if you as an EU student want to start an EU in a, a barren place, a barren college or barren area, then I think you should start with a prayer. Pray if you're alone. Pray if you are, if, and then you try to reach out to some other people who have like-minded. If can, if there is no one, then try to evangelize someone, and then together you can pray again, and then start this prayer meeting. Then, after you have start praying together for an EU, the next step that you can take is organize an evangelistic program. When I talk about organizing an evangelistic program, I'm not talking about a big evangelistic program where you call a speaker and many people come and join. I'm not talking about those evangelistic programs. Uh, by evangelistic program, we mean EBS, Evangelistic Bible Study. You can start choosing a portion from the Bible which is evangelistic in its content. Maybe take an uh, example of Lawson from Luke 15 or John chapter 3, the discussion conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus Christ, or uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Um, you can choose some specific passages which is evangelistic in nature and then prepare well and call some people and then you can share with them the gospel. You can also go around the college, distribute tracts, uh, the gospel tracts, and there are so many other ways you can reach out to different people. So start with a prayer, then go with evangelistic programs. Then start, start mobilizing support. And in this and this stage, you can take the help of the staff workers that you already know about. Maybe the secretary, the state secretary, or even coordinators, or even the UASI national. I think you can even contact them and uh, help them and uh, take their help regarding some support. They will help you in mobilizing some support and contacting some people who are nearby you who can help you in this case. And next we will come to regular fellows. So you started with a prayer and then you uh, did an evangelistic program, did Bible study and mobilized some more people and then you start mobilizing support, taking external support. And then you, the next step that you should do is start a regular fellowship. I think it's very important that maybe once in a week or maybe once in two weeks, perhaps twice in one month, it doesn't matter. It is up to you and then you can start a regular fellowship. So every week, perhaps, you can come together and pray and then have a Bible study, prayer meeting together. So a regular fellowship is important. And once this regular fellowship is in full swing, then you can go towards organization. So that's when you hit uh, the organization criteria. So these are the steps toward organization. By organization, we mean that you give it the name of, uh, you, you make the organization, you make it into an organization, I mean, make it an EU, before it was not an EU, it is that's a mere fellowship, but now you give it an organizational form. So let's see uh, the steps toward organization. Okay, 
when there are four or six believing students, share with them about forming an EU. Let's say now you have done everything, pray, did evangelistic program and mobilize support, have regular fellowships. So let's say a minimum you are around four to six people and then maybe more than that. So you have come and then you have started a regular fellowship. Now you can share with them. So we uh, start an EU, so we give it a formal structure to this uh, regular fellowship. There are so many benefits of joining EU. So you can start sharing with them your vision and then sharing with them like, uh, can we form EU? So I think that's the first step. The second step is, okay, let's say this, yeah, let's form an EU. So what you should do is get a, uh, get a handbook which is uh, witnesses for me i don't know whether it is available of course now it will be heard but when everything is okay you can get it from the from the center student center or you can even order it so witnesses for me the usi handbook you have to get that read together with your fellow uh, believing students and then according to that you have to start functioning i think the handbook session they were taking up is all about uh, this particular book we have all taken out from this book so basically it speaks the same thing you can also read it for yourself or you can i think you should get you should get your hand on this book witnesses from me and then after you have done the reading and you're well oriented with how eu work then it's time for you to prepare a constitution i think constitution is a session i will be taking up tomorrow and uh, i'll discuss about it in detail and then you can also read it from the handbook itself about constitution uh, you must look at the constitution there they have provided a model and according to that model you must uh, set your EU you must give it a constitutional structure to the EU so you can ask the help of a graduate even if staff to help you with that you need to have a constitution even for your EU so you're going to use the constitution that the constitutional model that the EUSI has recommended and which is there in the witnesses for me. Then after you have done all this thing, uh, what you can do is let them sign the membership form. So every people, maybe six or five people or more than that, maybe 100, 200, doesn't matter, whoever is willing, they can all sign the membership form. The membership form we will discuss in detail again tomorrow and then I think that's, that's it, to sign the membership form. Let the student who initiated the EU take responsibility and form a small committee prayerfully. So once you have done, uh, once you have done forming the constitution and once you have done signing the membership form, what you can do next is form a committee. You have, must have a president, you must have a secretary, you must have a treasurer. And then according to the needs, you can have more office bearers, maybe prayer secretary, maybe mission secretary, maybe music secretary, and then oh, there are so many librarian, and it, the list goes on quite vast list. So you can have a committee prayerfully. That's it. Yeah, I hope that's the end of the session. Thank you.